Exactly. Just because I was mad at the time, you know, that don't mean I have anything to do with where she is now. I mean, honestly, I don't think she's missing. I think she's hiding out for some reason. I don't know, somewhere, some, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, people are going to hate that, right? I don't care. <laughs> I right. mean, it's. I mean, I understand. I'm just. I'm getting your right. story, bro. But exactly. I'm just trying to be the devil's advocate yeah, and right. understand that right. like people are doing I mean, this there, like you saying that. There was actually a time that we were arguing and whatnot, and I told her, you know, if you steal all my stuff, I'm going to press charges on you. I want to do everything I can to send you to prison. And she made the comment that she would become a missing person. She told me that, straight up. Huh. She did say that she would become a missing person. I said, well, that's not going to work out too good for you. You can't hide all your life. Hopefully they should get pulled over somewhere in a traffic stop. They'll be like, oh, hey, you know, there you are. Something mm. like that. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think anything's actually happened to her. So today we speak with Matt Bunner. Now, Matt has been contacting me for about three months. And the reason he contacted me at first is because there was a podcast episode done on Spotify called The Vanished Podcast where they were investigating what happened to Nancy Brittner, which is a local lady here that come up missing about nine months ago. No one's been able to find out what happened to her. So in this podcast, Matt was pretty much accused of being a possibility of someone that may have done these things to her. So that right there makes me kind of nervous to talk to him. But at the same time too, I feel like if we can eliminate him from what happened, isn't that beneficial? Um, he, he wants to come in and talk about how his rights were violated or something like that. So I'm interested to see how this will go. But uh, I know this is going to be a controversial episode. And I know that uh, Nancy's family might feel a certain way about this. So before I do the interview, that's why I'm making this video to, to let everyone know that I feel a little, a little, uh, I don't know, I just don't feel real good about doing this. But at the same time, too, Matt's reaching out. He might have something to say. His story is just as valid as anybody else's. Um, sometimes people can say and do things that are ignorant towards another person, and it doesn't mean that they're good to the links that some people may think that Matt did. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, see what he has to say, see if I can pick his brain, and uh, come up with something for people to look at um, and maybe help. And as far as Nancy Brittner's family goes, man, any of the kids or uh, relatives or anyone that's involved in any of that that wants to reach out to me, I want to help you guys. So um, let me know if that's something you want to do. I understand it gets hard. Uh, I have no idea what you're going through. I can't even imagine it. Um, but I hope this interview can help someone uh, to understand what's going on with Matt and with Nancy. And, you know, I hope that they can... They can come up with something to find Nancy, man. But just let it be known that I'm nervous about this interview and I hope it goes well. I only want to do it because I hope it helps somebody. Uh, so, yeah, man, that's it. So waiting on Matt now. He ought to be here any moment. So we'll see how this goes, man. Thanks for watching. All right, Matt, what's up, man? Oh, man, I uh, was just um, celebrating um holiday or yesterday and whatnot. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, I uh, just, uh, I just wanted to, you know, uh, put my word out there about um, this thing going on. There's a missing woman around Winchester that everyone's talking about, whatever. Um, Nancy Brittner, um, a lot of people said that I was thinking I'm a suspect or whatnot, and I might have something to do with her missing. There was even a podcast called The Vanished where her family went on there and pretty much tried to paint me out as a suspect. I sent you a copy mm -hmm. of I listened to the whole thing and um you know her family knows exactly what happened how she sold my house how she used the protective order in the system and okay so before that introduce yourself like you know tell us a little bit about you before we get into all, all that. right uh well um my name is Matt Bunner um been in Winchester all my life pretty much um I've got a little bit of a record, a history, you know, we all do, I guess. So. Everybody that's been on here does. That's right. You know, um, one time when I was locked up, I did write a book, uh, Feeding Time. Mm -hmm. um, it's out. It's out there, you know. I'm not no Stephen King yet, but, you know, maybe one day, you know. Took your possible. time inside to write something, though, yeah, instead man. of just sitting there. Did it, you know, did something positive with it. I mean, it's a little twisted and a little crazy book, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, it's pretty interesting. 
right. a lot of people like it. I got a small fan base starting so far, you know. Okay. So what did you like? What's your history as far as drugs and and alcohol and? and uh, I mean, jail? I, I mainly just drank, smoke pot. You know, I mean, I've done a little bit of everything. Never really messed with meth or heroin or pills or none of that. Uh -huh. You know, done some coke stuff like that. Uh -huh. You know, over the years. Now I just smoke pot pretty much. You know, I don't mess around with nothing else. Okay. All that stuff's behind me. You know. Right on. And then you say you went to jail. What'd you go to jail for? Uh, distro. Well, I've been to jail for several things, but when I wrote my book, it was a distro of Roxy Codone. Okay. Got what year was that? Out. What's that? What year was that? I got out in 2015. Okay. So, yeah, I went in like, what, 2013, something like that, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I got hemmed up. Somebody wore a wire, you know. Same thing happens around in Winchester all the time, all you right. know. But uh, did my time, got out, got my job, whatever. Got on my feet, got a place. Uh, the one place I was staying at, um, they sold the land, so I had to move. Okay, you said something about purchasing a trailer, or getting a trailer after that that you fixed up? Right, yeah. Then the, there was a trailer on Route 11 across the road from Easy Living. Okay. Um, I got permission from the landlord. It, it sat there empty for shit. I don't know how long it was empty. Um, if you're familiar with Route 11, mm -hmm. right across the road from Easy Living Trailer Park, that one trailer sat there forever. I don't know exactly which one you're talking about, right. but I know that area. But uh, so I called courthouse, got the landlord's information, whatever, went and knocked on his door, asked him about fixing it up. You know, he said he didn't have the money to put into it. So I asked him if he'd let me do it. And he said, well, sure. It didn't have no water pipes in it. You know, I had to remodel the whole kitchen, put hardwood floors in it, new hot water heater, toilet, all kinds of shit, you know. And uh, so I took my time, did it and everything. Finally started staying there or whatever, and uh, I was there for a good two years, I guess, you know. And, uh, and the whole time, what, are you paying rent, or how did that work with the landlord? We, uh, he was just letting me do the repairs or whatever, and uh, which, when uh, I, I didn't actually live there. I started working on it because I had a full-time job or whatever, so it took me a good year before I could even move into it because I had to move a bunch of furniture out, do all kinds of stuff, so. Right. But it was about two years that I was messing with the place and everything, you know, in and out, whatever, before all this other stuff happened. Okay. You know. So let's get into that. When, when do you hook up with Nancy? Like, when do you start, when do you meet Nancy? How does that? I met her uh, first week of November, uh, I guess it was 2021 or 22, I want to say. Uh something like that uh i met her through her sister and her sister's boyfriend at the time um he wanted a place to stay he was leaving his wife whatever the situation was with that and uh which i knew him i let him come whatever and then he brings nancy's sister in there it was chaos and drama all the time they'd fight and argue and everything else which she wasn't even supposed to be there and uh so then they bring nancy over well she ain't got a place to stay and this and that and the other whatever and i was like i was on the couch with my dog i didn't even care about a bedroom i didn't have a woman wasn't worried about a woman you know i just got rid of a, another situation you know mm -hmm. and it wasn't even you know i just had my place me and my dog and i was happy you know and uh so she stayed there a couple nights and whatnot, you know, and she'd bounce in and out here and there. And then uh, sometimes I'd be asleep and they'd let her in the back door and this and that, whatever. And I told them several times, you know, no, you're not staying here. No, you're not going to live here, you know. And there was a few times we drank a little bit. A couple things went too far, so to speak, you know, she's... In a way, uh, roundabout way, she was trying to be a hobosexual, basically. You know, trying to do whatever she could for a place to stay. And it just wasn't anything I was interested in, especially the more I found out about the person, kind of person she is, whatever, you know. And uh, So, like, is it just alcohol and weed at the house? They using that's all drugs? I did. That's all I was doing. She was doing meth and shit all the time. Oh, okay. I mean, it wasn't right in front of me or whatever, because I told her, you know, I don't mess with it. You know, I don't want it around me, you know. But whenever I wasn't there or whatever, I mean, I'm sure they're doing the thing, whatever. Her sister 
uh, went to jail for running a meth lab. So uh, well, later on, eventually, she ended up going. She she had prior charges when she got with the other dude that was staying there. She had prior charges from that before that for running a meth lab or something. I don't know all the details on that, but uh, okay. But but back to where it comes into you. So like, where does the accusations get thrown at you? So you're with Nancy. You stay with her for a while. Yeah. And then things get to a point to where you all split up, right? Well, she uh, she goes and gets a protective order on me, saying that I put a pillow over her face. My nephew had been staying there for a little while. He'd gotten out of prison. She got him to be her witness to say I had a pillow over her face. She went and got a protective order on me. Had the magistrate grant her rights to my house. Made me leave. I couldn't go back. So what happened with the pillow over the face thing? Like, what happened there that even made them say that? Uh, she was in the bedroom running her mouth or whatever, and she was supposed to be packing her stuff to leave. And I went to the bedroom. I was like, look, shut your mouth, pack your stuff, leave, whatever. She had a knife in there, started swinging it around, whatnot. And I just grabbed a pillow off the bed and, you know, just like so she wouldn't cut me. She did cut my hand when I was trying to block her or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I just took the pillow and kind of, pushed her onto the bed, you know, and she grabbed me, she grabbed my hands or whatever, and she started screaming for my nephew, get him off of me, get him off of me, or whatever, and when he came in, he thought, you know what I'm saying, that I had a pillow on her, but the pillow was off to the side, there wasn't nothing over her head at the time, you know, but that's the story that they collaborated and told the police, whatever, there's two of them, one of me, you know, so they took So me. you get locked up from that? Yeah. Okay, the same day that, that it's reported. Yeah, that's okay. right. Which I'd been out to the moose with my mom. When, when me and my mom and my nephew went to the moose, whatever. I'd had a few drinks, whatever. So he looked at me like, oh, he's drunk, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, so when all this pillow thing happened, you had been drinking? Yeah, a little okay. bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. I wasn't drunk. Not that you remember you weren't blackout drunk? No, okay. I, rem- I remember everything that happened. I remember every bit of it, you okay. know. And uh, so I went to jail, whatever. And they booked you on what? Assault and battery. Okay. Which they would have gave me a PR bond, but I told them straight up, I mean, you just want to take me to jail because I'm going back to my house, you know. Okay. I'm not leaving, you know. That's my stuff, my place. I put the money into it. The per- They wasn't even there around when I found the place, you mm-hmm. know. They ain't got nothing to do with it, okay. you know. But they knew the situation where I didn't actually physically have to pay rent every single month like you would most other places you know and they were trying to find that deal you know like oh boy okay let's get him out of here whatever you know so then once i went to jail on that charge um i got out that was on friday night i got out monday i was thinking the protective order done ran out when i went to jail that night i had her phone and she had mine so i was going to have somebody go back and swap phones she wasn't there, so I went in and put my key on the door, pushed the door open. I had a coffee table in the front room there. It had a little uh, door on it with a key and a lock. I had some money in there and stuff. So I was going to grab my money, get some clothes, dip out, you know, try to work out the situation later or whatever. So the money was gone, and like you know, like I said, I thought the protective order had done expired whatever three days so there's a protective order that tells you you can't go to your own house or that you're just not allowed to be around her i could i can't go to my own house okay. she had it stated in a protective order that the magistrate granted her full rights to my house and her name's not on the lease or anything like no, that or nothing. any paperwork nothing nowhere wow that's weird nothing okay so uh then they locked me back up the same day for violating the protective order well, then I thought, it, you know, it had definitely expired by then. So I write her a letter saying, hey, look, I know what your plans are. Don't be selling my stuff, you know. I mean, it's not going to end well for you in the end. I mean, you know, you're going to go and pawn all my stuff, whatever, one way or another. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to end well. You can't do stuff like that to people. And, 
you know, sooner or right, later. So, so what do you mean by that, though? Like, are you threatening her? Or are you talking about police? Like, what do no, you mean? No, I mean, like, you just can't do dirty stuff to people like that. Okay. And, you know, forever, you know what I'm saying? Sooner or later, something's going to come back to you okay. somehow. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, so you're talking more about karma than yeah, you are about. Yeah, exactly. I'm not saying anything like I'm going to do okay. anything physically to her. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's that ain't going to do me no good. That's right. going to send me to prison, you know. I don't want to be locked up, you know. And basically, that's what I was telling her, you know, like, you know, you, you just, you can't do that, whatever, you know. And uh, so then I got violated for that. Another violation of protective order. For writing a letter? Yeah. Okay. So uh, then I went back to jail for that. And in the meantime, she, uh, I got a bunch of electric guitars and stuff. I got a double neck guitar. Um, she done took it to West Virginia, pawned it. I just had a hunch while I was in jail. Sent my mom to Bear's Pawn Shop to ask him about the double neck guitar one neck's a bass and the other neck's a six string regular guitar mm -hmm. or whatever it's pretty cool and she went in there and asked him about it and uh they had her and my nephew had just took it in there to try to pawn it like a day before and then when they wanted to fill out paperwork to prove it wasn't stolen they left and he said you might want to try west virginia so she went to west virginia and found it frederick county wouldn't pursue it you know, they, they're they not going to go to West Virginia worried about a guitar or whatever, you know. She said that her other sister gave it to us or something, whatever, you know. And I've got all kinds of proof of where I bought all my stuff, all my receipts, whatever. Um, all the other electric guitars and stuff I bought from Ear Food record store mm -hmm. right in exactly. town Exactly, we're talking about been there for 30 years. Yep, yep. Jamie and, uh, Jamie and Tony are really great people. Give a shout-out to Ear Food. Uh, but anyhow, uh, he uh, he even came to court and everything to, you know, he was going to testify that, you know, he did sell me all these electric guitars or whatnot. They threw it out as a civil matter. Um, I had a truck sitting there that um, the title wasn't in my name yet because a friend of mine had passed away on fentanyl overdose. His mom had the truck and the guy that he had bought it from, he hadn't had the title switched over yet or whatever. But it was sitting there, and uh, she got rid of that. Um, she just basically started getting rid of anything she could that had any value to it. The truck that, uh, there's a truck that she had stole from her husband, who she was married to. When I first met her, I guess she had left him, whatever. I found out all this other stuff way later on, that she would uh, left her husband, she was married to. She went and got a protective order on him. He lived with his mother and father, who's like 80, 90 years old. She, uh, when he was in jail, she went and had the title, his truck title transferred to her name. And his mom and dad had to stand in the house and watch her load up anything she wanted and take it out of their house, antiques and stuff that they'd had forever, you know, and just cleaned it out. And then, uh, so, so yeah. That was before you met her? This, right before I met her, yeah. Okay, so now she's in your house pretty much. She's yep. staying there. You're not allowed to go back. Yeah. So you've been arrested twice under protection order. So how does that how does that move forward there? You get out of jail for the note, and then what happens? And then um, so at that point, I'm staying at my mom's. And uh, so then after that. I mean, that's got to suck, man. You put all this work into this house, right? Right. Yep. And then now you're kicked out of your own place. Yeah. I'm lucky I got my dog back, actually, for real. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I couldn't go back. You know what I'm saying? Like. If I ride by, if I ride by, whatever, you know, like, if she sees me outside, one time, actually, I had, because it's Route 11, you know what I'm saying? Like, I do go places, whatever, you know. She seen me ride by one day. She called the law and got me violated again on another protective order, saying that, Riding by, like, what do you mean there, riding just, by? Just, you know, it's right, it's right there on the main stretch of Route 11, you know what I'm saying? Like, she seen me in a car that was going down the road. Okay. And she called and said that me and my mom pulled in the driveway and I yelled out the window that I was going to burn the place down. Right. So that's the next thing I was going to ask, because in the other podcast, they, they mentioned that a lot, like right. your threats to her right. and stuff. Like, now, like, there there was times that we were arguing before this ever happened that she would tell me that she's going to take my house and everything in it. And I did make the comment, if you take my house, I will burn it down with you in it. I was mad at the time. Right. You know, I did say that. Right. Yes, I did. Right. I'm not going to deny that. Right. But well, that's what this is about, though, right? right. It's about you keeping exactly. it real and being right. honest. And, exactly. like, just because you said some things doesn't mean that the end right. result was whatever has exactly. happened. Right. Exactly. Just because I was mad at the time, you know, 
that don't mean I have anything to do with where she is now. I mean, honestly, I don't think she's missing. I think she's hiding out for some reason. I don't know, somewhere, some, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, people are going to hate that, right? I don't care. <laughs> I right. mean, it's. I mean, I understand. I'm just. I'm getting your right. story, bro. But exactly. I'm just trying to be the devil's advocate yeah, and right. understand that right. like people are de de I mean, getting this like you saying that. There was actually a time that we were arguing and whatnot, and I told her, you know, if you steal all my stuff, I'm going to press charges on you. I want to do everything I can to send you to prison. Mm -hmm. You know. And so she, you kind of feel like she's running from that. And she made the comment that she would become a missing person. She told me that, straight up. Huh. She did say that she would become a missing person. I said, well, that's not going to work out too good for you. You can't hide all your life. Right, but also hiding from her family and grandkids, like everything that you, everything right. that I've seen and read shows right. that she was like with right. her family a lot, right. like just disappearing from all that and not having contact with I them mean, seems it, crazy, huh? Yeah, it does seem crazy. It don't make sense either, but I mean, there's a lot of other things that, you know, like a lot of other things in the situation. I mean, you know. Okay. Like, that's what I think. I okay, mean, so then this comes along like, uh, so now she's living in your place. Yeah. Uh, uh, she calls the police. It's the third time now. Yeah, third time. Okay, and you didn't pull up in the driveway or nothing. You're just driving by. Right. Okay, but obviously she feels threatened, right? Right. I mean, from well, the threats and things that you've said to arguments that you've had. Right. In the other podcast, one of the daughters said that she would come to their house because she was scared to stay there at the trailer. Well, it was probably uh, some time or another that I told her to leave. I told her to leave several times. Mm -hmm. Get out. This is my house. Mm -hmm. Leave. Anything mm -hmm. you may have brought here or whatever, take it with you. Take the truck that you stole from your husband. But you had no legal power to do that, right? Is that right or wrong? What's that? No legal power to tell her to leave? I mean, apparently not from what they're saying. I mean, that I mean, just seems crazy to me that you right. took this place, fixed it up, made it livable, uh, and then you're booted out. Like, where's yeah. the landlord in all this? How come they're not contacting the landlord? Well, I'd contact. Finally, I contacted the landlord when I was in jail. I tried. I caught him, and at first he didn't know what was going on. He's an old man. He's eighty three years old. You okay. Know? So then, finally, when I got out, um, let's see, when I got out from when I went back to the trailer, when I went back the same day, I got out. On a Monday, we had court on Tuesday for her to extend the protective order. I didn't know at the time that I already had the warrant for writing the letter. I guess court wasn't aware of it either. But anyway, while I was out, I went to the landlord. And um, Virginia is one of the only states that you could, um, a notary of public can notarize something on live video feed. I did learn that. But anyway, um, I was at the landlord's house. Had a notary public on video chat. Uh, the landlord was there, seen my paper that basically like a rental agreement that we'd never done one until then. Mm -hmm. When I first moved into place, it was just a verbal thing, you know. But basically, it was notarized saying that I'm the only one that had any right to live there or whatever. So we go to court the next day. I gave mine to the judge and notarized. She's got one that she handwritten herself. She forged the landlord's signature. Um, well, something or no, she wouldn't got him to sign a paper or something about a kid getting on off the school bus or something to that effect, is what it was supposed to be. But mm -hmm. when we went to court, she had a paper saying that she had the right to live there, which hers wasn't notarized. The judge tried to call the landlord from the courtroom, and he wasn't there. He went somewhere at the time or whatnot. So then um, the old man. Uh, Garland, he uh, he gave, he was like, you know, he basically wanted to wash his hands of the place and let his uh, grandson take it over. Well, the grandson, I don't know why he took so long getting eviction notice to put finally put Nancy out or whatever, but she was there for over a year. Um, he did try to, uh, did a, he sent an eviction notice to her for certified mail, but the sheriff wouldn't recognize it because it didn't go through the courts or whatever. But he, he had his lawyer to type it up, send certified mail. They didn't do anything about it. Um, I made all kind of, I was in and out of court trying to get the judge to grant me back my house. You know, none of the judges would do anything about it. Like, no, no, you know, like I had uh, I had my rental agreement that or the notarized paper. I had that. I had uh, an eviction notice, everything. They wouldn't do nothing. They just let her stay there the whole time. And then finally, 
um, about probably about a month before they say she came up missing, she was finally evicted on a, um, I forget what it's called. Can't, it was some, whatever the name or is. Whatever it was that got her out of there. So yeah. it was about a month before she disappeared. Yeah. And then she goes to the motel or whatever it is that night was the last time she was seen. Apparently, yeah. So then after she disappears, do, who contacts you? Are you, like, what what happens with you? Do the cops come to you? They ask uh, you yeah, when, when it first happened, I was on Facebook. You know, I made some comments on Facebook. Right, You right. know, whatever. I ain't going to deny what I said. Whatever. It's right there. Anybody can see it. Um, well, I mean, I feel like, too, man, just from, from my perspective, trying to be objective and understand it from your perspective, Everything that had happened up to that point, you felt like she had f***ed you over. Like the yeah. system f***ed you over, she f***ed you right. over, everybody had f***ed you over. Um, but prior, before she came up missing, uh, she uh, made two other reports, said that I tried to call her. She did it twice. One time I was up in Slainsville working on a roof, didn't even have no phone service. And um, I'd stepped in a hole and twisted my ankle out in the yard and... Uh, I was laying on the couch at night. I heard somebody knocking on the front door. I knew it had to be a cop because we never use that. We use the other door or whatever. Okay. And uh, we got ring camera outside. So next morning, I sent a sh uh, sheriff outside on the camera, you know. So I called him and asked him if they got a warrant. They're like, yeah. Well, you know, she said she she said that I called her. And uh, which I didn't have no phone service at the time to call her. So that was a uh, second false report. First one, first, uh, the first time, you know, when I went back, whatever the day I got out, okay, boom, I'll give them that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wrote the letter. I guess I'll give them that one, mm -hmm. you know. But then uh, when she said I pulled in the driveway, that was a false report. And then she called and said that I called her, which I didn't. And that was another false report. Then I changed my phone number. And, the, and she's still trying to use the spoof app thing that makes it look like, like I could... Um, I could make your phone ring and make it look like Joe Schmo's calling you, whoever, you know, and I'd do it all from my phone. And uh, that's what she done, you know, and the number that she used at the time was out of service for over a month. The second time that she did it, uh, she took me to jail. They took me to jail. I told the magistrate, like, you know, call the number. It's not even in service. And I sat in jail for two weeks with no bond for something I didn't even do on a false report. But yet, I've got a copy of two titles where she forged her ex-husband's signature on a vehicle title and another one where she forged my signature on a vehicle title. That's two counts of felony forgery and the Commonwealth will not prosecute or wouldn't do anything to her for it. And she's got multiple convictions of forgery and uttery and writing checks, forging checks and all kinds of stuff. A very extensive criminal history, probably worse or just as bad as mine. You know, and they're looking at me like I'm a monster and trying to paint her out to be a saint, and she's not. Well, I mean, you, you feel know, like it's unfair, like shit's backwards. Yeah, huh? I mean, you know, she was doing meth the whole time she was around me. I mean, not right in front of me, but I know she was doing it. You know, I mean, it's what she liked. You know, she, I'm a pothead. I'm like, here, smoke some weed. You know, no, nah, she didn't want that. You know, I mean, well, you know, drugs are drugs. Yeah, man. drugs are drugs. Period. They do what they do. Yeah, to I us mean, and, I know. ain't saying one's any better than the other. Right. One, but you know, but I mean, you know, she, I'm not gonna be up for two weeks either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. You okay. know. So and, when uh, the police come to you, like, what are their accusations of you? Like, are they talking about the threats? Are they accusing you of? Uh, no. When they uh, finally, uh, when I when I first came up and I put it, whatever I said on Facebook. Frederick County came there and was like, yeah, we've seen this or whatever. And okay. Everybody's saying, we need to come talk to you. And then when they got there and they seen the address, they're like, nah, she ain't going to be here. Because they remember coming there throughout the whole ordeal, you know. Was like, they knew they knew me every time I called, you know. And uh, so they're like, nah, she ain't here. Well, then um, I guess the uh, detectives from Winchester City, they came and talked to me. They came and talked to me the first time. I told them the same thing that I put on Facebook. I don't care if she's got maggots crawling from one hole to the other. Basically, got to watch my language, but, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they came back the second time wanted to talk to me. They asked me if I'd take a polygraph. At first, I was like, sure, you know, I ain't got to hide what you don't. But at the same time, they've already maliciously prosecuted me on 
all these other charges from her on these false reports and everything else might not have been them, but it's still the same system, the same county. They're all together. They're all connected. You know, we know how they are. You know, I'm not going to go in there and sit down and take some kind of test that, uh, as far as I know, I don't think you can use it in court anyway. I mean, you know, so why do you want me to sit down there and take your test when, I mean, didn't want to know, none of them wanted to do anything for me when I, all my stuff was being stolen and everything else, you know, I mean, I wouldn't trust them to take a polygraph test. Honestly, you know, I mean, why would I? Right. You know? So let's talk about this real quick. Where were you the night she disappeared? I was at a uh, trailer park right across the road from uh, Old Silver Dollar. And it just so happened about a week before I started hanging out over there, she was over there at another place right next door to the place I was hanging out. The person that I was over there with didn't really know all the situation and everything. When I started talking about it, they're like, oh, well, she was just over here next door with this other guy last week. And that's about a week before she disappeared. I mean, there's several people that it's hard to tell who she was hanging around and whatever. Well, there was definitely other people uh, vilified in the right. other po the other podcasts right. as well. Um, I can't remember the exact names, but right. there was people that was with her there that they had an eye on to some guy that she was in a had gotten rides from, and then some guy named Daniel. Daniel was my nephew. Okay, I know in the other podcast, <laughs> it's pretty. I find it kind of hilarious. Um, they keep mentioning who they say was my stepdad, and uh, that me and him might have had something together to do with it or whatever. Um, he's like 47 he was married to my mom she's in her 70s kind of you know screwy situation but uh is what it is me and him had our issues and we don't talk he don't like me i don't like him he pulled a gun on me one time we've done got in a fight twice he pulled a gun second time whatever um Apparently so no she, chance of you two being together to conspire on None anything. at all. Okay. None at all. Any other any other things inside of that podcast you'd like to talk about that um, stood out to you? Uh, I mean, you know, how, how they said, uh, basically everything they said about oh, well, her family saying that uh, they don't know what happened with the trailer or anything or how she ended up with it. Uh -huh. All of them know exactly what happened. They know how she used the system to do it. Every, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just sat there trying to paint me out and make it sound like she's a saint and they don't know anything that happened or whatever. Uh, the lady on the podcast said something about my criminal record and everything, you know, yeah, I've got violations of protective orders in my past. It's family stuff to dealing with my crazy sister and nieces and nephews and stuff like that. It's nothing. No violence. Nothing. I mean, you got a couple thing. of assault and batteries. Yeah, but it's just like, um, the guy my sister's married to, I poked him in the chest with my finger and got a salt and battery for it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I'm out there beating people up or anything. Not a history of that type of stuff? No, nothing like that at all, you know. Um, I do have a cruelty to animal charge. Um, a pit bull bit me in my nose, and I beat it with a shovel, you know, um, which I probably shouldn't shouldn't have done the way I did it, whatever. Uh, but I, I mean, it bit me in the fucking face, I'd have killed it. Bro. Exactly right. You know what I'm saying? And um, I got a cruel to the animal charge for that, but I got a pit bull just as big as the one that bit me and sleeps in my bed every night. So, mm -hmm. you know, I love animals. Mm -hmm. They may, they brought that up on there, on the podcast, trying to paint me out like I'm a monster. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's not the case, you know? I mean... Left out the context. Exactly right. You know, they basically just wanted to... It was almost like they trying to say, hey, he did it. Go get him, you know, and I didn't. I ain't got nothing to do with it. You right. Know? So you say, like, you don't care what really happened to her, uh, but it would be so much easier for you if something was found out, though, right? Sure, yeah. I mean, it'd be great. I mean, uh, hopefully they should get pulled over somewhere in a traffic stop. They'll be like, oh, hey, you know, there you are, something mm. like that. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think anything's actually happened to her. Nobody, unless maybe, um, I mean, I know in the podcast it said something about her family or uncle or somebody possibly may have done something. Um, I did hear a rumor about um, 
and the detective said it wasn't the first time they heard it. Uh, something about um, Nancy walked in and caught her uncle and Daniel, which would have been her boyfriend and my nephew. Um, not sure exactly what they were doing, but it's something that two fellas ought not be doing together, so to speak. Um, you know, I don't like I said I don't know all the details, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. they were going down doing something when she caught them. So, so you also have to admit too, though, man, it's really hard for someone to just disappear in today's world, though, right? Like, how would she do that? How do you think she just up and disappeared if that's what happened? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, she's got a lot of she knows a lot of people. You know, she knows. All kinds of people. Everywhere. So when you was with her, did she have credit cards, bank accounts, things like she that? She didn't have nothing. No, she didn't have anything. She didn't have down to her name. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know how she would survive or whatever if she is hiding out, whatever, you know. But also, as far as tracking her, it could be harder if she didn't have a bunch of things on the books. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's just hard to... She's got like it, five aliases, uh, last names, you know, from before. Um, like, if you look up her background check or whatever she's got like five aliases hmm. she stole my birth certificate my ged uh everything photos of my dad passed away you know my photo albums everything i was lucky to get back my vinyl collection it was in my car she had it packed up i guess like a package deal she was going to get rid of it she stood still got the title to my car um you know That's everything it. hey man I feel like this whole situation is just like fucked up a lot of lives, right? It has. I mean, between yours, between her family's. Right. You know, uh, and that's whether she's alive or not, like there's a lot going on there. Yeah. It just seems hard to, I don't know, man, I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around her just going off grid. I'm having a hard time with that, but I also have a hard time with why nothing has been found out. Where, why is the investigation right. lead to nothing? Right. And I, that's kind of why I wanted to do this, because I'm going to be real with you. I wasn't, uh, I, I didn't even know if I wanted to do this with you. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Straight up. Just because it's so controversial, there's so much going on, and I knew some of the stuff you was going to say was going to be the same way. Right. Sure. Um, but sitting here with you, I can kind of understand, like, from your feeling perspective, everything that happened to you in that situation, man, you have a right to tell your story, too. Right on. I appreciate you letting me do it. I mean, yeah. like I said, I mean, I got transcripts. I can prove everything I'm saying. I could back up every word of it. Everything I'm saying is 100% truth. Every bit of it. You know, like, they just basically let her come in and turn my life upside down and wouldn't charge her for anything. Nothing. I mean, you know, just let her go. Hmm. And she's done it to several other people before. I mean, who knows? Well, actually, uh, the Eddie guy that they're talking about, my mom's ex-husband... She was messing around with him for a little while. She was borrowing his car and stuff and I think spent the night with him a few times or whatever, you know. I mean, so who knows? She could have got with somebody else and just hiding out with them and not doing anything, you know, just laying low and got somebody taking care of her. Hmm. Yeah, man, it just seems, uh, like I said, there's a whole lot there to unpack, isn't it? There's there so is. many things that... that could have happened that you don't really know about what happened right but without all that i like i think the point of this was like you telling your story right yeah you basically mean, i just wanted you know kind of like a answer back to the podcast that her family put out you know bashing me trying to paint me out as number one public enemy number one or whatever you know and i'm not the guy man i ain't got nothing to do with it i'm not going to take a polygraph or do anything to assist them or help them you know but i'm not the guy you know, instead of them going and spending money on these billboards, $3,000 or whatever they are, you know, maybe they ought to pay back uh, her ex-husband and pay off her civil judgments or something that's like twenty grand. you know? I mean... And see, that's another thing about it, too, is like if the family knew that she was still alive, would they be doing all that? Because that's, that's another thing that's hard for me to understand. Well, like, I mean, I, I don't know, man. It's... The family is, I and mean. What do, what do they have to gain other than her missing? Like, okay, so she doesn't have to pay for this or pay for right. that. Those things right there kind of make sense. Right. You know what I'm saying? No accountability by disappearing. Right. But if she, like, there's a lot that's going to affect her that way too, right? Because, like, now I can't see my kids. Right. I can't see my right. grandkids. If she is in Antarctica or some shit right. like that. Right. I mean, it's, I mean, it, 
I understand what you're saying. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't make sense for it just, you know, to say screw her family or whatever, right. you know. But at the same time, I don't know, it's like a just something, I just, you know, I can't say I'm psychic or anything like that, right. you know what I'm saying? But I know I remember one time she told me that she would become a missing person. She did tell me that, you know. I'm not here to make up anything or whatever, you know. Right. She did tell me that out of her own mouth. You know, that if she did all this and I pressed charges on her, tried to send her to prison, and she would become a missing person, you know. And, and you did press charges and all that? I've tried every which way I could to do everything I could, and, I mean, they wouldn't do anything to her. So, I mean, other than civil judgment, uh, I did, uh, I was granted a warrant and debt and due or whatever, granted judgment in that, which well, all my property that she stole. So, I mean, I guess that says a little something that, you know, she did do it. I mean, it was my property that she had uh -huh. that she wouldn't give back, you know. I tried to get a U-Haul and have somebody go down there and get all my stuff. She wouldn't do it, you know. She did send back a truckload of trash one time, you know. I was lucky to get my laptop back. Uh, my buddy did give me my, lap, uh, my laptop and uh, the handwritten part of feeding time, you know. I did get that back, luckily, so I could finish it, you right. know. But, but. Yeah, man, I hate that all this happened for everybody in in the in the whole situation. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, everybody from the grandkids to the kids right. to her and and you and fucking everybody involved seems like they got screwed in this situation. Pretty much, yeah. Landlord got screwed. Everybody, you know. Right. Everybody. Nobody. I mean, nobody made out good here. No, not at all. It was a disaster. Absolutely. I told her to leave several times. You know, no, you're not supposed to be here. Go, leave, go somewhere else. And she wouldn't leave. Huh. Tough money, man. Yeah. Was well, that about it, man? Anything else you want to talk about? Anything else that, you want to drop real quick? I guess you that's about it. Feel like you got it, it off your chest? Yeah, that was good, man. Yeah. Okay. That's about it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, like I say, I was really skeptical, but I feel like you kept it real, dude. Like I'm pretty good at reading people. Yeah, right on, right. I'm pretty yeah. good at sitting here and 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 you know raking through the bullshit yeah, I got yeah straight up yeah. I, I mean yeah. just for me sitting here i feel like what you said is pretty real bro yeah, like man. everything you said is i don't know i, I don't know but y'all make a choice bro what do y'all think like matt come in here man this is real shit like he's being accused of something that he he says he didn't do and can you imagine walking around being accused of something like that and then everything else that he says he went through man drop a comment let us know what you think man this is definitely a controversial thing in our area right now yeah um but yeah, I wanted you to get a chance to say your piece, man. And uh, anybody else that's involved with this type of stuff right here with this Nancy Brittner thing, if y'all got any more information, man, hit me up. You can you can find me right here. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, because I'm definitely interested to talk to you. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. I yep. appreciate it, brother. Thank you, bud. You don't want to yep. drop no links or anything? Anybody can contact you? Um, Link for your book? Uh, yeah, it's available on uh, Draft Digital, uh, Blurb, Walmart.com, um, a bunch of platforms. You can find it. Google it. It's out there. Um, working on part two. Hopefully it'll be out here by the end of the year. Um, a lot of people like it. Check it out. Feeding time. Yep. Right on. Yeah, man. Up. Yeah, man. Don't forget to like and share, comment, all that stuff, man. Helps this little puny channel and this little small little trailer out. So thanks for being here.